Hello and welcome back to the guided video tour of this document, the Timeline PDF. In the last video we looked at the time frame from creation until the flood and in this video we're going to take a closer look at the period between the flood and the promise. In the 601st year of Noah's life, on the 27th day of the second month, the people and the animals left the ark. And God had told Noah and his sons uh, to be fruitful and to multiply and to fill the earth in Genesis 9-1. And ten months later, after they left the ark, ten months later is the beginning of the year, that our fax head was born to Shem. So we continue in Genesis 11, just like we had in Genesis 5, with the lineage, the genealogy of Christ. And we follow our fax head to Genesis 11:12 says, Our fax head lived 35 years and begot Shelah. And Shelah lived 30 years and begot Eber. Eber lived 34 years and begot Peleg. And Peleg was so named because the earth was divided in his days. Genesis 11.1 1 tells us that the whole earth at this point in time had one language and one speech. And although God had told them to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, we see that Nimrod began to build Babel. They decided to build a city so that they would not be scattered all over the world. And this is a point in time where God confused the languages and caused them to be divided across the land into their various nations with their new languages. So from the three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the whole earth was populated. We're also told that from Babel, Nimrod went and built Erech, Akkad, and Nineveh. The earliest archaeological evidence that we have of languages and civilizations is from this time period and in this region. The Sumerian and Akkadian languages were some of the earliest languages. This is the cuneiform writing of the Epic of Gilgamesh, which was right about this time frame. Also, some of the earliest cities that we have archaeological records of are in this area as well and date back to this time. As the older cities would become destroyed, they would build on top of them. And the archaeological digs show that the deeper you go, the older the cities are. And this is believed to be one of the oldest cities of uh, ancient civilization, and it dates back to this time frame and to this area. This is about uh, 50 miles from Nineveh, uh, where this city is. Some of the earliest structures that we find were also from this area and from the dispersion. Ur, uh, the city that uh, Abram was born in and where he comes from, there is a ziggurat. This is a computer model reconstruction of what it might have looked like. And we actually have a picture of the reconstructed uh, ziggurat in Ur. And of course, uh, some of the most famous um, as Ham's children migrated down in this direction. Mizraim is the grandson of Noah. Mizraim is the Hebrew word for Egypt. And of course, uh, Egyptians are pretty well known for having mastered uh, these structures. 
Genesis 9.19 tells us that from the three sons of Noah, the whole earth was populated. Now it's interesting to note that all humans have one of three hair profiles that they can be traced back to Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The FBI and forensic criminalists use this information to help identify a victim or a suspect. A hair type can tell them if the person is from Caucasian, Asian, or African descent. And we can see from the geographical distribution of these hair types that it, it matches up with what we find in Genesis 10 and how the people were dispersed across uh, into their various uh, nations. Thank you for watching and make sure to tune in next time as we continue to look at the period between the flood and the promise that covers the year of Abraham's birth and we'll also discuss uh, the BC dating. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any upcoming videos and it'll make it easier to find your way back here in the future. Thanks for watching.